All right, hey guys, uh, Mr. Wilder, and I'm going to talk to you today about economic systems, different types of economic systems. Uh, we learned about different economic goals uh, today in class, uh, but now we're going to go into uh, how those goals influence the type of economic system a country chooses or a nation or a group chooses to run its economy. Um, so in this case, it's how government influences how I make money is uh, the economic systems. That's why they're kind of important. Um, and there's a continuum, as you can see on the screen here, uh, there's a continuum of economic systems going from communism, which is very much a planned system, uh, to socialism, to capitalism, which is more of a free market system. Um, anytime you're over on this side of the spectrum, over by communism, you have a high degree of uh, government control and a lot of social services available to the people. And when you're on this end of the spectrum, a capitalism end, uh, you have a very low degree of government control and uh, very low levels of social services. Okay? All right, let's move ahead. Quick review. Um, if you would uh, take out a sheet of paper and just answer a couple questions for me real quick. This can just be on scratch paper, or you can probably just do it in your head. But maybe just take out a sheet of paper. Okay? First of all, can you tell me what goods are? This is something we went over uh, in class and we had a homework assignment on. Do you know what goods are? Do you know what services are? Do you know what resources are when we talk about resources? What are those? A really important word in economics is scarcity. Have you got a de good definition of that down yet? Okay. So um, economic systems, when we talk about economic systems, uh, a good definition of that is just a, it's a method used by a society to produce and distribute goods and services. Or in other words, how the government tells us what we can get and how to get it. You guys probably know all economic systems must uh, considering the following questions. These are the three fundamental economic questions. First one is what goods and services to produce, how will they produce them, and who will get them? Every society answers that. Uh, finally, how much will they produce now and how much later? That's kind of an added question. Um, each economic system answers these questions in a different way. So whether you're a command economy or a market economy, you're going to answer those questions in a different way. There are three basic types of economic systems. The first one I want to talk about today, uh, make sure you understand, is called a traditional economy. Um, in a traditional economy, the economic questions are answered by habits and customs. Cus customs, not customs, uh, but customs. It's uh, just the way things have always been done by the people. Okay, so it worked 100 years ago, it worked 50 years ago. Uh, let's keep doing it the same way. So often children work the same jobs their parents worked. Uh, so if your father was a blacksmith, you're a blacksmith or a farmer, etc. Uh, often uh, people involved in this economy uh, are involved in farming or hunting and gathering. Um, they don't like change in the traditional economy. They don't want to change. Uh, in fact, sometimes they even fear change. Uh, they don't think it's right. Um, some examples of traditional economies that are still out there would be uh, the Eskimo uh, people. Uh, up in the Arctic, uh, the Amish uh, here in our country, uh, pygmies in Africa, tribal people in South America, um, any of those groups still kind of follow the same traditional economy that they've uh, followed for hundreds of years. Okay, our second type of economic system is called a command economy. Um, the government answers the basic economic questions in this economy. So instead of it being based on tradition, like a traditional economy, uh, now the government is making those decisions. A uh, big advantage to that is uh, a command economy can act very quickly in emergencies uh, and provide for all people equally. So if there's a natural disaster, if there's a war, things like that, a uh, command economy can jump right in uh, and try to help people out right away. Some disadvantages, uh, often they're inefficient. Um, the people tend to not work very hard in a command economy because they don't have much control over their uh, what they produce. The government controls it all. Uh, there's very little incentive 
to work hard or be creative because everyone uh, basically gets paid the same and makes the same amount of money in a command economy. So why should I work any harder than the guy next to me? And uh, some current examples uh, of command economies would be communist countries like uh, China, although it's moving further and further away from a command economy, uh, Vietnam, uh, North Korea, and uh, the former Soviet Union. It's no longer the Soviet Union, now it's Russia, uh, broke up in the late 80s. And then also currently Cuba has a command economy. Okay. Our last type of economic system, although not really, but we're going to call it our last type, is the free market economy. Um, economic questions in this type of economy are answered by individual buyers and sellers. Okay, So for who and how much, that's just based on how much people want and how much people want to, you know, it's, it's up to you how much you want to buy and how much you want to sell in a free market economy. Supply and demand influence the economy. People act out of self-interest. Uh, so they're going to do what's best for themselves in a free market economy. They're not worried about the other person necessarily. And uh, the motive is usually for profit. Um, and this drives the economy, everyone trying to make a profit. This is also known as a couple other words you might have might have heard before, free enterprise system or capitalism. Okay, and those, those are two words that are really associated with the United States a lot. Examples of free market economies, although not really, are the United States Western Europe and Japan. I'll get to that not really part in just a second. Okay, so I lied, guys, uh, and I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a well-known liar. No, I'm, I'm really not, but I did lie about this. I said there were three types of economic systems, but really there is four, and the fourth one is called a mixed economy, okay? Uh, no economy is pure market, so it's not just, there's no straight up free market economy in the world. Probably the closest to that right now is uh, someplace like Hong Kong, uh, has a has a pretty free market economy, but not totally free. Australia is considered actually a little bit freer market economy than the United States, uh, but uh, there's no true free free market economy. There's no pure command economy where the government makes all the decisions, or pure traditional economy. Um, again, even the Amish are influenced by the government and uh, you know tribes in uh, Africa and other places. They, they do have some government involvement uh, in most cases. So um, all those elements appear in all economies. Some have more elements of one economy than the other, though. Okay. So on one end, we have the market economy, right? Then we have the mixed market economy kind of in the middle. And then we have the command economy over here on the right. Uh, and like I said, usually you're somewhere in the spectrum here. You're not clear market economy, you're not clear command economy, you're kind of a little bit more one or the other, and that's the mixed economy. All right. So if we we're going to look at a couple countries that we do know a lot about, the United States would fall uh, pretty far to the left on a market economy. Great Britain, more of a mixed uh, economy, kind of in the middle. They do have a lot of uh, socialist ideas in Great Britain. They have socialized medicine, uh, the government uh, has uh, does a much has a bigger influence on the people in Great Britain with uh, laws and regulations and things like that. And then finally, you have the command economy of China, although not a true command economy. China is allowing a lot more free enterprise in their countries. Businesses are getting a lot uh, less restricted, and foreign investment is being encouraged in China. So uh, they're. Uh, they've grown uh, a lot over the last few years because they've kind of lightened up on their command economy. All right, they've grown economically. They've always been a lot of people, but now they have a lot of economic strength. Okay, the American mixed economy, uh, while the United States is mostly a free market economy, it does have elements of a command economy. Uh, the government does make regula regulations, right? We, we talked about one uh, with our first classroom debate, which was minimum wage government decides what a minimum wage is in the United States. Uh, states can decide that also, and cities can decide that. Uh, there's all kinds of business regulations, um, the child labor laws, uh, uh, different uh, laws that companies have to follow uh, to uh, uh, take care and respect the environment, uh, things like that. So the government's heavily involved in our economy, uh, but we still have a lot of freedom. Uh, you know, we can start our own businesses, and as long as we follow those regulations, uh, you know, we can do a lot on our own in the United States with our mixed economy. 
Okay, some features of American uh, free market uh, economy. We, uh, we believe, and this is something we've talked about in class, we have very strong belief in our economic freedom, that individuals have the right to choose. Uh, we like choice in our economy. We like choice in our products. Uh, we like to choose from hundreds of different cars and computers and uh, kitchen tables and whatever else. Uh, so economic freedom is very important to us. We want to be able to start our own businesses or, uh, uh, and uh, buy from whoever we want to buy from. Uh, the second uh, feature of American uh, free economy, free market economy is competition. Uh, we believe there should be more than one producer of a good or service, not just one government producer. And uh, because we have a lot of choice, uh, we tend to get better products. And then finally, uh, private property. Uh, in the United States, uh, we have very strong private property laws where if you own property, uh, it's yours and the government can't take it. And you have the right to do what you want on your property as long as you're following the laws. And uh, that's very important to us. In other countries, that's not necessarily true. The government can just step in and take your property. Okay. Uh, the fourth one is self-interest. Individu we believe individuals make uh, decisions based on what is best for them. Uh, that's very important in our economy. We, we kind of worry about ourselves. And a lot of people feel that's kind of a selfish attitude. Um, we get a lot of criticism for that. Uh, our fifth one is voluntary exchange. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to buy or sell your goods, uh, and uh, the government's not forcing you to do that. And finally, the profit motive. Individuals are driven by a desire for profit to make money, um, and that's why they're willing to make their products better. Uh, that's why they're willing to try to make them cheaper uh, to uh, drive up their profits. In our, uh, in our American so that's our free market economy, but we do have a command part of our economy too. And remember, I said the government does have some regulations for business practices, wages, labor hours, safety practices, etc. The government limits certain choices. Uh, you, some things you cannot buy or you can't produce certain goods or services. Uh, it has to be tested by the government and okayed by the government, especially medicine and things like that, and food. Uh, and the government provides aid to the needy in our country, so it's not just everyone's on their own. Um, we do have some things called Medicare, Medicaid, welfare. Uh, we now have Obamacare, uh, which uh, uh, gives everyone uh, free health care. So all those things make us more of a command economy, not a market economy. Okay, let's use some examples of my pizzeria. Okay, uh, so this is my pizzeria. Uh, how would my pizzeria function under the three different uh, economic systems? Let's start with in a free market. Okay, In a free market, uh, I answer the basic e economic questions. It's up to me to decide that. So I determine how much cheese and pepperoni goes on my pizza. I determine the quality of the cheese and pe uh, pepperoni. I set my employees' wages. I set my business hours. I get to choose all, that th all those things. In a command economy, much different. The government answers the basic economic questions, uh, such as the government sets the amount of cheese and pepperoni on each pizza, so maybe they say a certain number of ounces or pounds or whatever, and the government determines the quality of cheese and pepperoni, so they decide how good or bad that cheese or pepperoni is. And finally, the government sets the employees' wages, and they also set the business hours. The problem is, how much does your government know about pizza? If there's no pizza experts in your government, then maybe they're making bad choices for your for your pizzeria, right? And maybe I, I should be making those decisions because I'm the expert. Okay, in a mixed economy, my pizzeria, the government and I both answer the basic economic questions. I determine the amount of cheese and pepperoni on the pizzas. The government determines the quality of cheese and uh, pepperoni on my pizza. I set employee wages. The government sets a minimum wage. So I have to have at least a minimum wage, but if I want to give them raises or pay them more than that, I'm allowed to do that. And then I determine the business hours. The government determines whether I'm safe to be open or not, but I get to decide how long I want to stay open and what hours I, my business is there. Okay? All right, I hope this made good sense to you. Um, and uh, if you have some questions, you can talk to me in class. Uh, this, uh, this stuff's gonna show up pretty prominently on your next test, your first test. So. Uh, make sure you do answer the questions that go along with this video, and uh, if you need to review the video, make sure you're pausing and stopping and rewinding. Uh, it's great of you to do your homework, and I will see you tomorrow.